peeps, I hope you are well. I have another art thing for you today. Let's go. So I keep seeing things on Instagram at the moment on my feed of people that are recording still life in a kind of printing style. The printing kind of mixes a little bit of pattern in with it and, and I've always wanted to try it. So today we're gonna do it. The first things we're gonna need is a setup of still life. Now, as we've recapped before, still life is anything that doesn't really move. I'm gonna show you some pictures that kind of inspired me so you can see where I'm going with this and you can start to pick your objects. So as you can see, there's a lot of kind of plant-based things. So I went and got my plant out of my bedroom. I'm gonna be using this. I'm gonna be using this green bottle that is in this room, because as you can see, my favorite color is obviously green. And a couple of um, garlics, because they're quite funky shapes. We can see some nice lines and patterns down them. And someone else used it in their work, so I thought that's a good idea. So, next to me here, I'm actually just going to arrange them in whichever way I want. But you kind of want it to be a little bit more exciting than just having them lined up next to each other. I'm probably going to go for something like this. Obviously, not loads of us have a kind of screen printing kit at home. So, we're going to go down the route of old Henry Matisse and try and do the kind of cutouts. So, today is going to be all about simplifying the shapes that you see in front of you. But we're also going to be cutting out paper and putting patterns on it that link to our objects in front of us. The stuff I'm going to need today, I have a pad of paper. You probably want a few sheets of paper. I've got some big paper as well. Uh, a pencil and rubber, Ooh, yeah. some wax crayons and some pens and some watercolour paints. Um, if you don't have watercolour paints you can just colour things in with a pencil and um, you could use coloured paper if you want to but I'm going to actually paint the surface of the paper to get the colour I exactly want. Now I know what you're thinking, these do look like watercolour paints from school but I assure you they are definitely not. So I'm starting by taking out a few sheets of these papers. Um, we want a selection of colours, so for my bottle, plant and garlic, I probably want a colour for my bottle, a colour for the plant leaves, a colour for the pot and a colour for the garlic. So all in all that's four colours. Um, you can be as crazy as this as you want, it's going to be quite simplistic, so you can really use any colour you want, no one's stopping you from having purple garlic if you like. I'm going to take out four pages of white paper and choose my colours. So once I've decided my colours that I want to do, I'm going to start off with my background. Now all these pieces of paper are going to be getting a colour wash. A colour wash is when you do an even layer of a colour over a piece of paper. Now I would quite like to do quite pastel colours because I saw someone do that and I thought it looked pretty cool. So we will need a lot of water. So I'm not even going into my watercolour palette yet. I'm just getting as much water as I need in here. I think we've all done it where you haven't mixed up enough colour for your wash and you want to cry. Okay, once you've mixed up the colour that you like, you want to try and get the biggest paintbrush you can find and we want to go up and down on our page and cover the whole thing. You don't want to take too long doing this because otherwise you see bits where it's dried. We kind of want it as even as we can. Onto the piece of paper for the pot. I've mixed a kind of ready colour. Um, personally, I, just because I know that my leaves are going to be green and the complementary colour of green. So whatever you want to do, but maybe think about your colour combinations. The pot is fairly plain. It doesn't have much patterns on it. So I'm actually just going to do this one exactly how I've done the background. I just want a nice layer of red. So onto the bottle one. As you can see here, my bottle has a lot of kind of grooves in it and I want to represent that pattern using my watercolour paper. For this, we can use some sort of wax resist. So I've got a bunch of wax crayons here. I'm going to use a lighter colour. So I'm going to use this yellow crayon and I'm actually just going to draw lines all over this piece of paper, top to bottom. Now, if you had something checkered, you could do checks. If you had dots, you could do dots. You could literally draw whatever you want with your wax crayon. Um, you can also use a candle if you haven't got any crayons in the house. 
I've mixed up a green kind of colour for my green bottle. But like I said, you can use whatever colours you like. You don't need to stick to what you see. Now I've drawn my wax lines going all the way down. I'm just going to take my watercolour again and do another wash all the way over the top. So as you can already see, that wax crayon isn't letting any of the watercolour by. And you get these really cool nice little lines going on. For the green bit on this plant, I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I might do some sort of zigzag pattern and do a wash just like I did for the bottle one. While other pieces of paper are drying, we can actually come back to the first piece that we did. Now my one is yellow, so I am actually taking a yellow pen as well. So it's the same kind of colour, very soft pattern that we're going to put on. And you can put whatever pattern you like in the background. You don't even have to do a pattern if you don't want to. Now Charlie and I at the weekend woke up and on TV was the Spongebob Squarepants movie, which is absolutely amazing. So if you haven't seen that, you do need to sort your life out anyway and uh, watch it because it is very funny but I'm actually just going to use those kind of flowery shapes to fill in my background kind of here so I'm just going to cover my whole background like this and then we'll get ready to cut out our actual still life shape Remember when you're doing any sort of background to actually go off the edges as well. You don't want it to have all these shapes in the middle and then a border of white so you could do half of your shapes going off the edges. And now onto our objects. I'm going to cut out this shape out of this piece of paper. I'm not going to use a pencil. I'm just going to go straight in with scissors because it gives a little bit more of a free feel to it and it makes you think about the proportions before you cut them and it's a little bit more exciting so I do suggest that you just cut straight out of your piece of paper. I watched Grayson Perry's art club the episode that was just on and he kept saying about things they don't have to look exactly like someone because they were doing portraits it just has to have the feel for it or um a likeness to it so even though this may not be the most perfectly in proportion bottle in the world hopefully from the shape from the lines that i've put on it you have an implied sense of this bottle i'm going to go through and do the other shapes exactly how i've done this so I'm just going to get my piece of paper look at the shape in front of me and cut it out Now I have all my sections all cut out, ready to go. I'm going to stick them all down exactly how I want them. So there we have it all stuck down. Now I'm gonna go in with some pens. So like I said, I have these felt tip pens earlier. We can go over certain sections. Now this plant has kind of yellow on the outside. So I'm actually gonna outline each leaf in a bit of yellow. And then I'm gonna to go to my garlic and I'm gonna add some a bit of texture on there. And then I might do a couple of things in the background just to make it a little bit more fun and a bit more happy. I'm not gonna use black. Black's a really harsh colour, and uh, one seen as these are like pastely colours, just a normal bold colour will be more than enough to bring another dimension to it. Alright, and I'm done. Here is my final piece. It's a little bit light for the camera, I can't really lie, so maybe next time I'll do it a bit darker. But all in all, we have our cutouts. So our cutouts are really simplified shapes. So really going down to basics. Cutouts a bit like Henry Matisse. We've painted our own paper. We've experimented with, with a bit of wax resist and adding patterns on top. Our whole composition is what I'm looking at right here. And I have added a few details of pen and some kind of sketchy lines around the outside. But yeah, patterns, cutting out, wax resist, and making our own colours. Make sure to catch Grayson's Art Club. I am going to submit a piece for the episode after this one coming. So it's fantasy. At the moment, 
I am thus far. This will be my cat in his wizard's hat. I've actually painted white underneath a lot of this, so I'm hoping that if I get my sandpaper and kind of sand it down, you'll be able to see some of it through. I don't know if it's gonna work. It's all about giving it a go and trialing it out, having fun and um, keeping safe at home. So, have a lovely day. I will see you Friday and um, catch up with you soon. Bye.